Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now you regular guys know I like doing weird and wacky baits. This time on this episode, there's a bait that all of you are familiar with, but a method of using it, I don't think you thought of before. It's really good, it's successful, I've known about it for years. You're gonna know about it now if you watch this clip. I've got to sit down before I tell you this, people. I'm going to be fishing for all those people who might have seen our films, How to Make Maggots. Check it out on our playlist. There's quite a few people go, maggots, how to, how to make maggots. And of course, maggots are made by flies laying eggs, generally on rotting flesh. It could be chicken or fish. It's called a blow. And then they hatch out there and they turn into maggots and the maggots eat their way through all the meat. However, the maggots, as used by anglers, all generally end up out there in the water. Now I'm here at Finch Farm in Berkshire and I'm going to be trying to catch fish. No, not just on any old maggots, on these. Well, they look like maggots, don't they? In fact, they are indeed maggots, but they are frozen maggots. Because a lot of anglers, when they finish fishing, turn out their bait tins, just knock them out. They don't want to take them home. Don't ask me why. They don't want to take them home. They don't want to fridge them because you need to fridge your maggots to keep them alive for any length of time anyway. Otherwise they turn into what we call a caster or a chrysalis and then they hatch out, turn into a fly and the whole cycle starts again. So live maggots are very good, but I also don't want to keep them in the fridge with a wife giving me grief all the time. So what I do is if I get any left over, I don't throw them in the water. I put them in a bag and I freeze them. And these are frozen maggots, and I'm going to try and catch on frozen maggots. I'm here in a tiny little pool area. No idea, it's not been uh, pre-baited or anything for me. It's not some golden ticket place, it's just a regular day ticket place. And I'm going to see if I can catch any, any fish there. I'm going to try what we call a link ledger and a waggle float. I'll show you what they look like. So these are the offending objects, the perpetrators, the maggots, as you can see. Nice big fat ones, they were alive, I've frozen them. Now, matchmen know all about this because if you fish with a frozen maggot, there's two, two tips here for you. If you fish with a frozen maggot, okay, the fish know at the end of the day on hard fish match waters that any drowned maggots is dead, so the anglers must have gone. And that's what they tell me, and the matchmen will often fish, knock all their bait out in the water, and pleasure anglers really, really close in the margins. But the fish won't take them, the clever ones, the carp and stuff like that, they won't take them because they know they're alive and wriggling. If they're wriggling, that means an angler's about. If they're dead, they say they realise the anglers have probably gone home and they come in really close and start feeding. Now, the other thing this is good for is if you're fishing with barbless hooks, as, as I do, um, if you fish with a barbless hook with live maggots, sometimes they wriggle off. So I tend to pop one over the top of the eye just to hold it on the hook and then top off with a couple of others. So two tips there one is they don't crawl away and late afternoon is very good to fish with dead maggots the fish know that the anglers are gone or they think the anglers are gone and the second point is if you do fish with a barbless hook they don't wriggle off i'm going to put two or three on here i've already plumbed the depth let's just chuck a few out there just literally out in the middle i don't know i'm just fishing there that's always a nasty right to left wind here you can see blowing down that way now i've got a match rod reel and i've got here a waggler float the depth looks to be about, I've already plumbed it for you guys, that saves you people doing it. I've already plumbed it at about three feet, three feet six. A waggler float, a straight, not a body waggler, just a straight waggler, what's called a straight waggler. This one looks suspiciously like it's broken full of water. I can see water in there, that's why I had trouble shotting it, but we'll give it a go. 
a couple of locking shot, then absolutely nothing for, man, that might be four feet actually. Just going to put on about a size 12 hook here. Three, three maggots, because these you see, they're not going to wriggle off. That is the beauty of using them. I can go big hooks, I can go small hooks, it doesn't really matter. I want to show you two lots. I want to show you float fishing, ledger in, and possibly on another water, how close these carp will come in and they will get absolutely nuts when you feed these in. As will other species. So I'm just literally out there. No more, well barely a rod length out. I see no bubbles at the moment. Listen guys, I could blank. I'll just come on an afternoon when it's windy everywhere else. I come to Finch because it is fairly sheltered. Now the other rod I'm just going to throw out again with dead maggots. I'm using here just a trusty old Avon rod, but a bit old school. I'm watching that float at the same time. There's a bite indicator there. Guys, I'm on with the float. I've just had a fish on that float. I think it's a small one. This is a link ledger up there. It's standing on a link there. If you can see that, I'll put it against the sky. Hopefully you can see it slides up and down on the swivel. It's stopped by the bead. It's about four inches here and a knot at the end. And I've got an SSG shot on there for weight. Now I can shorten that up here. So when it's laying on the bottom, the fish can move around, but you can also move off like this without moving that lead. It doesn't feel that shot there. It doesn't feel the weight. So that's an old school way, put a bunch of maggots on that, see what we can get. And a very, very lightweight bobbin just down here. Now that float's gone, I know there's been a fish on there, I'm just going to see if I'm still hooked up. That's minutes, yes, we're still hooked up, and he's come off. But listen, what I want to show you is, God, this wind is going to be so annoying. I've got a little rod rest pushed in here, because I don't like putting my blank down here on the gravel. No, it's not because I might damage the... Uh, Blanket cost me a pound that rod. One pound, that's one dollar fifty for our cousins in America. But purely because I can pick it up quickly. I'm gonna go a little bit further over. About there. So if this is down, what I'm gonna do, move the lucky hat for a second, bring the bucket in here. I've got a bit of slop there I'll have to throw in if I do have to get stuff going. And I can just rest the rod butt on that so I can just grab it, I can grab it straight down and up. So let's get some of these maggots in. So do not waste any of the maggots. Now a lot of these will get eaten on the way down as they're sinking slowly, roach and rub will take them. They're probably, I would say, come down there. Now they sink about the same same rate anyway. They can also bait up close in here as well. So let's get this ledger rod out, bunch of maggots, and see if we can catch a fish for you. I'm dead. Now you can see there, and hopefully you guys can see this over the water. You can see the maggots are look. Well, they won't be wriggling. They've been thawed out. But of course, you can thaw them out on the morning you go fishing if you want. Just put them in a little bit of uh, water in a bucket and they'll soon thaw out. I'm just going to flick this link ledger down in the swim as well. It might get a bite, it might not. Oh, this one. That's a dead maggot bite, by the way. Flick that over, just let it sink. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to be telling you I'm not using hook links. I'm going straight the way through with this. I'm using five pound line straight through there, guys. I'm not using a hook link. I see no reason to. I think these fish are gonna be confident taking dead maggots. Let's stand up and throw these out. So down here, let's get down here. I've got a very, very, oh, 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 watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. We're on, we're on, boys. My goodness me, that was showing you that. 
that was exactly showing you about how to set the bobbin up. Oh, he's come off. It was a bream. That was a small bream, people. What I'm going to do is show you that bobbin. <laughs> I got that straight on camera. It's the spine of a plastic book, a notebook, and it's very, very, very light. That's why I use them. And you actually could see that going up. That shows you bream take. Well, it's only to tell me I used them maggots. I wouldn't freeze them otherwise. The float's gone. Oh my God, it's going to be one of those sessions. I let it sink. I just spring it open like this, put it on. I put my rod ring the other side of that roller. There's a little roller in there so that there's a nice acute angle going across the roller. Pull it down till I can just feel the weight. Just there, just feel the weight of the um, shot that I got on the link ledger there. And that's all set. And then I can concentrate on the float without looking down at the bobbin. Get up there, all the time. Two fish missed. Oh, good Lord. That was on the drop, boys. I'm gonna have to hold this rod. That was on the drop. You know, I might be able to show there's no bubbles actually, it surprises me. You would generally hear get bubbles on the surface, popping up where fish are digging around. Put it down, I'm bound to miss it. Oh, 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 oh. Missed it. Okay, now they could be small fish. Now look what they've done to the maggots. Can you see that people? Chewed them, so I'm gonna give them a nice big bunch next time. No, not that big bunch. This big bunch. This big bunch is when I don't catch anything. That is a, I think you'll agree there. If you see that's a massive gob of maggots on there. I assure you, they nosh them down with no problem at all. The other thing is, fish on boys, fish on, fish on. It's not a roach. Oh my God, two camera. I've got that in my mouth. The other thing is, if you're fishing weedy waters, dead maggots don't wriggle away. They lay on the surface of the weed. That's a nice bream. They lay on the surface of the weed, whereas wriggling maggots, live ones, will wriggle into the weed and the fish can't get them. So dead maggots, to me, are even more deadly than live ones. This is a nice bream. Wowee. Now, one mistake we did make, was not bringing my matchman's net. I had to bring the carp catfish trawl net which is ridiculously stupidly big. Why do they make these great big things like this? I don't know, but loads of fishes. Oh, Christ, my chair's falling to bits. That was a close run thing there. Here he comes. Let's get him in the trawl net. Easy, I think. Can't even lift it, so much net. There we go, people. Look at that. There's a bunch of maggots. Just nicked in that top lip, hooks out, and there we have a pretty nice bream or dead maggots. I've been here five or ten minutes. Let's get him back. I think I'll put a few more maggots on this. I mean, it's a huge, if you have a weedy water, a huge advantage fishing dead maggots. Because they obviously just sink and they just lay like this on the bottom. Dead hand. I'd sooner fish with dead ones and live ones in fairness. Let's see if we can get you guys a few more fish to convince you about dead maggots. I can see it's going to be a very, very hectic session if they start finding them and noshing on them. That's a link ledger. I overcast the swim and then when I sink the line, I bring it back into the swim. Who stole that bobbin? Smith. Also, you can use these black bobbins. Again, the spine off a book. We'll be using those, using those against a white background, say over the water, something like that. Let's just get this float back in the swim again. And we're all systems. Oh, I looked up and it's gone. I'm gonna have to hold this float well, people. So when it's breezy like this and you want to get the maggots out there and you can't throw them and they, they spray around too much, get yourself one of the Matchman's catapults. 
They come in different grades and sizes, you know, strength and elastic. And they've got little rigid cups with vents around there. So this way you should be able to get, don't put too many in, just like this. You should be able to, oh, it's a bite. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna catapult it. I just saw the float dip. Just gonna ping them out like that. And you can see, once you get the uh, knack of it, you can scatter those maggots in the uh, area that the float's sitting. I've got a feeling, I saw a little dimple over there. I think there's a lot of small fish taking those maggots on the way down. That's all I've got left, look. There's half a pint of maggots. And don't forget, they're bonus. They're left over from the previous fishing trip. They could have been banged out, just like this, knock them out like this on the, in the margins, and you'd have caught nothing. This way, I'm going fishing. My bait has cost me absolutely nothing. Just seen a bubble. Just seen some bubbles there. I'm going to see some more bubbles in a minute because I think this chair is about to collapse. It'll be total bubbles. Underwater bubbles. Now, if you don't get a bite on this link ledger, what I'll do is wind up and just bump it. And very often you can get a fish take that because it's been moved. Let's recast the float. Now, Ah, there's a beep on the, uh, here we go, just down there. You guys probably won't hear it, it's very windy and the microphone possibly won't pick that up. I'm now seeing, although the water's brown, I'm still seeing a little bit of colour out there. I figure that's the fish finding all these loose maggots and digging around in the mud, picking them off. What I will do is, <clears throat> I'll put a single maggot on in a minute. Just thread it around and shallow it right up and see if we can't pick a different species up. Because you've seen that bream take dead maggots. Trust me, carp definitely do. Oh, nearly. Let me change it for a white one. And you guys might be able to see it go up. Additionally, if it's very windy, you can pinch a shot onto this, which I might do as it is very windy. That gives it just a little bit of extra. Oh, nearly. It gives it a little bit of extra uh, weight there. Show you what it's like. Now, I'm not going to bite too hard with that because I want it to crush onto the plastic. Use the forceps. So hopefully you can see that. It's got a little BB shot on there, which I'll change that. It'll just hold it a lot tighter and give me a better advantage for getting a short, twitchy bite. Some of the fun is in using these old school techniques, which when I was 50, 60 years ago, we thought this was the absolute refined method. And we did it obviously without bite indicators. A lot of the time we have to sit and watch it. Didn't have plastic, we used to roll up some tin foil, bits of tin foil. And sometimes we'd even pinch some dough bread on the hook, put a piece of dough bread and that would give it weight as well. And then we went to the super duper advanced technique of along came washing up container bottle lids like this bottle tops we used to use those as well good in windy weather still use them I like using them all I still catch fish with them now I'm going to bump that again it's a little bit more tension on that with the shot on it you see move the float don't be afraid to move them just, just an inch, it just might induce a bite. Missed it. Let's check the bait. A lot of the time the wind and pressure, air pressure does upset the fish, no question of that. And of course, using maggots like this, frozen ones, frozen dead ones, no dead maggots is you can refreeze them again you don't have to worry of them going off like you would do a live maggot if you wanted live maggots you'd be trying to keep them cool or putting them in some water just gently just trying to keep that you know that cycle of turning them into a cast or a chrysalis you're trying to break that cycle and slow it down so that they stay in the maggot stage as long as you can this way you don't need to wow that's horrible wind 
No, it's not right. That's a fish. That's a fish. I knew that was a fish, boys. And oh, here we go. Perch came off. And there we go. Hopefully you saw that one beeping away on the camera. So that's perch. I know you guys didn't see it, but trust me, it is. Perch and bream liking those maggots. The sun's come out, but I don't like the wind. Could rain, we've had some rain. Hopefully we don't get any more. Another fish on boys, and this one is, third species is a nice roach on dead maggots. <laughs> dead maggots. He's even swallowed this one. He has really toasted it down there. Tells me he likes feeding on it. Here he goes. Now you can use ground bait to attract them, obviously just not, don't have to throw loose feed in with just maggots. With rivers it can be very good. You can put some ground bait out if you want. I mean it's weird when you think about it. A totally, totally a bait that was uh, dumped by other anglers can actually give me some good sport. So hopefully you people are getting the message on the dead maggot scene. <laughs> don't talk about it, don't talk about it. And a bite straight away. The wind's blowing this way, left to right, in case you can't see it, it's going left to right. It's wanted, it's wanted to drag me through the swim. Oh, 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 oh yeah, small fish. Don't forget, the shot's under the float like this. The length here to the hook is sinking way, way slower. I've got no shot near the hook, so it's sinking very, very slowly. It's going down and sinking slowly. So that gives it more time in the zone of the small fish. The bigger fish are liable to be on the bottom, and I missed that one totally. Totally. Let's see if we can't get you a bream of substantial proportions. I say it's only a small pool, it's a fun pool, this one. All I can say is the fish are in there, it's up to you to catch them, like all fisheries. Fishery people can do no more than stock them. It's up to the anglers to catch them. Another fish on boys, and it is another roach. Here we go, quite a nice roach there. Yeah, they're quite a decent size. It's just the fact that it's a long narrow pool here and it is actually this section. There's a aerator over there and that's sort of killing off the ripples a bit. It's gone a little bit quiet for the moment. But what I might what I might do is just put uh, one maggot and fish it very shallow because I have a feeling a lot of these loose maggots are getting taken on the way down by the roach because the last two fish I've got are roach. I know they're on the bottom. The hook bait's on the bottom but another thing we're going to do is just throw a pinch or two really really close in by the edge of these rushes here. I mean literally lowering my rod top down because there could be, if I get it plumbed with the float right, it could be some rud in there. It'd be a different species to show you on the maggots. So what I'm doing, I'm basically covering three bases here. I'm float fishing, which is my main method of trying to catch fish. But I've also got a link ledger down the side here. So I've got bait right on the bottom. And by scattering the crust over there like that, with this left to right wind, sure, you know, I've lost a few bits of bread to the, uh, to the coots going there, but eventually you give them a slice or two and they stuff themselves with it. I've already heard a carp way down in the rushes down there. So I've got float fishing, ledger in, and by putting this bread in there and letting it drift down there, I've got the outside chance of seeing a, maybe a carp might come up right down the bottom there. Of course, they could turn up in this swim as well, and they like dead maggots, but this is a way of searching the water out. It costs nothing. It's stale bread that I get in bags like this. Leftovers from a baker. Now, why don't you just go to a baker's and ask them do they get stale bread left over? Some people make it into what they call bread pudding. <coughs> There's nothing wrong with bread pudding. They make it out of stale bread, really stale bread. That's how they make bread pudding. Nice it is too. Um, and if they've got some left over, even if it's a little bit mouldy, 
You can use it for floater fishing or you can mush it up for ground bait. So I get mine from a baker's. Youngsters out there, just go and ask the baker, you might be surprised. And of course all you do is mush it up, let it get damp, squeeze it all up, you put a little bit of ground bait with it and you can end up with a lot of ground bait and it's costing you virtually nothing. I love it, me. I love the N word, nothing. Except when I'm catching, or not catching, that type of nothing. Well, that's some more roach guys, small ones. But that bread that was drifting down into the rushes has gone right down a channel down there. And I just, because this swim's died, thought I'll walk down just to see where that bread's been going. I can tell you exactly where it's been going. Down the carp's tummies. So I'm going to pack up here. We're going to move about two swims down, because that strong wind has pushed it all down there. I'm feeding on it dead myself, actually. Ham and tomato. Bought from the bakers that gave me all the bread. So you've got to support your local shops. And I might be able to winkle a carp out as well. Right, now the bread is drifting, just so you folks know, all the way down this, oh, right down there, all the way down this channel, which is absolutely tailor-made for me. So for the last, let's say, hour, the bits of bread that the birds haven't got have been drifting along these rushes. And I've already seen, they're not big carp, don't get me wrong. Wow, look at that, seagulls see me already. They could be right in amongst that far bank of rushes. Getting overgrown down there. I remember fishing this a few years back. This was quite open. And of course, the carp could be way, way down there. In fact, I'm going to throw some bread down there. Now, the advantage I've got is this link ledger. There. Take that bunch of dead maggots off there. Just pull those off. I could bait up and have a fish here, and I may well do. But that would obviously sink. All I'm going to do is just take this link ledger shot off of there. Like that. And the only weight I've got on there is that little BB there. I slide it up a little bit, about three or four inches away. I could put a piece of crust on here and I've got a good chance of picking a carp off. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Oh, did you see that, boys? He turned right off it. That's very, very, very soft bread, this. I'm going to try and go right in that hole in the rushes over there. That's where we seem to come out from, right there. Unfortunately, the wind has now got me, and it's pulling me out. Very spooky-looking fish, that one. And like a mirror, maybe five pounds. And I can keep scanning down here. Look, there's all these bits of bread. They're all going to drift down there. There's every chance of carp. Oh, come on. Holy cow, it's a big one. This is a big one, boys. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't even see. I just saw black shape. I was talking to him. I'm going to get it out. I can stay down. Stay down, stay down, stay. I don't want him on the other side. I did not even see. I just looked up. There was no bread. And there was this jet black carp there. Well, well, right in the rushes. Did not see the fish come up. I looked around, no bread. Black hole there it was, big swell, and you just lift into it automatically. It's twanging around quite a bit there. Now, this might be a one swim wonder, boys. You know, you just get one, it's a very narrow area. I haven't seen anything else come up on that bread up there. It could just be a one swim wonder. You get one fish out of it, spooks the rest. This one is going very, very well. Black as your hat. Here he comes. Common. A common, a common, a common, a common. Just be able to show you another species. He's in. Do a quick look at him. That is one black carp. Might be a new species. Here he goes, unhooked himself. I've got a feeling he's gonna go mad and flip. But that's a nice one to finish my little session with, but I'm not finished with the uh, dead maggots yet, don't you worry. 
This is just a way of capitalising on another fish. Well, I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen anything else come up on this bread here. And I'll chuck some way, way in the rushes there, which they generally like to get right in amongst the rushes. But it's peculiar weather. We've had at least two weeks. Oh, a customer. I do believe a customer. Right over the bottom end. See what I mean about they've drifted all the way down there. I'm going to go down there. And I'm going to offer him some din-dins and see if we can get a take. All this while I'm moving down to another swim, boys. So you can see it was a bonus. Well, I was on a carp, boys. I don't know I yeah, I am still on the carp. I moved from the other one, came back here where I hooked that other fish. I threw down a bunch of maggots. Left it hanging over the top of some rushes like over there. Just left it hanging about this much below the water. I just saw a swirl of struck. So, carp coming on the dead maggots, we hope. Very, very, very black fish. Black as your hat. And I lost a big one up the other lake. That's a weird coloured, weird coloured fish, but listen, I'm literally walking back to the car. My stuff is packed up there, guys. I do not speak with forked tongue. And I thought I'd just leave my match rod, as you can see it's a bit mishmash. Match rod, match rod, match rod, and a single hook in case I saw anything come up. This one's been burying in the weed. Come on, boy, in you come, finish the evening off. Go home and have something to eat. A bit late, but still, he's in the net. Oh, yeah. Why, oh, he's a fat one, isn't he? Look, chubby fat one. Now, what we're going to do now is pack up, put this chaffy back. So that's another species for the dead maggots. That is what? Perch, roach, carp, bream. Good show. Oh, yeah, and slime. Well, those dead maggots definitely catch fish, I assure you, especially in the spring and summer months, when those anglers have been out there dumping all that lovely bait in the water for me. And don't forget, freeze bait down. I do it all the time. Now, what about beach fishing? I do like a bit of saltwater fishing, but boy, oh boy, is it tough out there. This was a trip when I really struggled. I do struggle quite a lot on the beach, but occasionally I get the old good fish. This is what it's like. Only you guys know, the beach fishermen of the UK, how tough it can be. Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, or it could be the Totally Awesome Disaster Movie. I'm down here on Hurst Shingle on the south coast, opposite the Isle of Wight. And my office for the day is viewing totally across the bay here to the famous Needles. And a very, very rough, well it's like a sandbank that's out there. I know it's marked on the charts, I've seen it on my, uh, on my boat, on the sound charts. Anyway, I've come down to give it a go. And I've left the top sections of my spinning rods, either in the car, dropped them on the beach, or I've left them in the garage. I think I've left them in the garage, so it's one of those rush jobs trying to get down there. I'm sort of looking forward to it. So here's the situation. I've got a couple of big baits out. I have a half mackerel out on one rod, grip leads, pulley rigs, and a big, big chunk of cuttlefish on the other, left over from about a year and a half ago. On a boat trip. I've also forgotten the wind muff, so you're going to get wind. I'm as close in here as I can get the camera, to be honest, because if I go in here, you can't see anything. I go here, I think the wind is noisy. It's howling, you doubtless hear it. It's been about force five, I would guess, at least. So, it looks as though it could be a big fish like this or nothing, and I feel nothing because I'm. Do I go with small hooks? That's the thing. Do I go with small hooks? I've got some worms. I bought some ragworm from the local tank shop. But something's telling me to sit out there with a big bait and wait till it gets dark. It is now 2 o'clock in the afternoon. High tide, as I understand it, is about 3.30. So I've got basically a falling tide and I'm going to stay at least an hour or two, possibly, into darkness. It's very, very cold. A northwesterly wind. 
It looks as though it's got more westerly in it, so it has really, really been all against me today. The braid on my reel got a, a back loop on it. Have you ever had that before? So I cast out and had a god awful mess. I've had to strip it out along the beach, and obviously I've lost a load of braid, so I can't put it in the distance I want to. Nor have I bought a spare spool of braid. It's not looking good, but listen, us beach anglers are used to stuff like this, aren't we? Things going wrong all the time. And you never know, the beauty of sea fishing is, look, Blake's probably on the cars, but you never really know till you pack up and throw those rods in the car. I'm really annoyed because I like throwing my spinning rod out, trying to get some, at least save the blank rods out, you know, trying to get uh, something small. But I'm thinking I've got, I've got the bottom half of the rods, so I can put the reel on, can't I? I was thinking of throwing it out without, the, you know, just hand lining and putting it in the top of the tripod there. And I thought, hang on a minute, there's one here, butt ring. So I've got. <laughs> I've got half a fishing rod. Well, I've got half a brain, obviously. I wouldn't be trying it otherwise. So I've got half a fishing rod. I don't see any reason why I can't rig this up. Put some small hooks on, maybe some strips of squid, or half sections of worm. I've got sand. Look at all the bait for the small hooks. And just throw it out and put it up and, you know, get high as I can get it. I can alter the fittings on the tripod and get up as high as I can, hopefully. Some, I don't know what type of bite I'm going to get, because the, the tip is... Well, a quarter of an inch across, <laughs> it's a quarter of an inch thick. I think we're going to throw it out and just see what happens because those rods up there, it's a really, really strong wind. It's horrible out there. It's, it's left to right with the flood tide. I think if the tide starts to ebb in a minute, it should be about 3 30s, 4 o'clock. That should, it should sort of neutralize itself against the wind. So the wind's pushing the line this way, the tide's pushing the line that way. So it should be about even so I think I might just I might just do this if I know I'm gonna do it. Let's give it a shot, eh? Why not? Live dangerous. Right, I realise I've got to use something called a silly rig, which is really a short rig, a short rig body. Look how close the hooks are together like that before the lead. It has to be that way because I don't have the drop from the rod top to the lead to give me much power for casting, so I thought this rig would be up inside that button otherwise, wouldn't it? So I've got the shortest rig I can possibly use, plus a couple of that too, a fixed grip lead there. I could get it out about 30 yards, but don't laugh, will you? Freezing out there. I wound in the baits after one and three quarter hours. The half mackerel is just polished and burnished. It's not even been chewed by crabs. Unbelievable it's been out that long. And the um, cuttlefish is exactly the same. Didn't even need to elasticate it on. It's absolutely zero out there. Nothing on the half rods at the moment, but you never know. We're going to have to relocate down further down. Tide's dropping now. 
and when it gets dark I might have a chance that's what I mean with a bit of a shout when it uh, gets dark but because I've got to be closer to the rods to be able to see the bites the bites you got to laugh and you get half a rod top missing right I'll get this gear packed away and get moved Well, I've relocated further down the beach. So, the rod tops are right where I can see them side on against the skyline as well. And once that sun goes down, I'm hoping we might be able to pick off a fish and save the dreaded plane. But listen, if you're on a pebble beach and you're going to cut up things like I'm using big cutting fish, mackerel, squid, basically cutting, obviously you've got your fishing knife, you're going to blunt it to hell if you start using a piece of stone. Just get a piece of wood. I've just got a piece of saw and old wood out of the fireplace piece of pallet wood and that'll do you a cutting board at least a knife goes into the wood and doesn't blunt whereas if you cut on top of a stone or rock it will blunt and then you'll wonder why you've got such a messy bait a nice clean bait is a better cast goes through the air better especially if it's all bound down with the elastic thread so get yourself a piece of wood just look it's, 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 it's just so common sense easy to remember get a scrap of wood and just keep your knife sharp end of Will we get anything out here? Do you know what? I'm not even sure I care with the sunset going like this. Well guys, it's getting dark. I just had one tap, wait for this, over there. <laughs> I can't believe it. On half a fishing rod. I just saw it move about an inch or so and I went up and I held the line across my fingers, just touched it across my fingers and I can actually feel the fish bites. I'm letting it nibble away there, it's not a big fish and we're going to save the blank and not only that, catch on half a fishing rod. Oh my god, that would be something. That's the other end of my fishing rod. <laughs> Don't laugh. I think I've missed it. <laughs> Smith made me wind it in too fast. <laughs> I saved the plane. Well, no, not with a ragworm, obviously. One little pout in, save me the blank. Caught on, wait for this. There's the other end of it, half a fishing rod. I've never been so pleased to catch a pout in. OMG, just goes to show you, look, a lot of it's waiting till it's dark, but I wonder if there's anything big out there if the pouting are coming on now. And that was on, let me get this guy off. Oh, I can't get him off the hook, he's got two hooks in him. Half a sand on a piece of rag. I think I'm going to break out the expensive rag here now. Guys, it's not often I pull the pin and pack up, but my fingers, even in the gloves, index finger, my thumb are going white. I think that's the first sign of frostbite. My feet I can hardly feel. The wind is just not giving up, it's not laying down at all. There's a couple of guys up there, a couple of guys this way, and all in the daylight hours, I have not seen one fish on the court. So I'm one pouting. Save them on half the fishing rod. Guys, gonna have to call it quits. Gonna have to pull a pin on this one because there's only a certain amount I can take at my age. And when there's no fish about, listen to this fish bite, not gonna be stay a bit longer, but it's just too cold. So I shall return. Do not adjust your set. There will be another attempt at shore fishing pretty soon. And don't forget to watch my TA outdoors, hit the subscribe button. And that little bell thing that tells you instant notification of when our films are up. Me, I'm not looking forward to getting out. Inside the sanctuary of this tank is absolutely biting out there. God, I've got to love this guy. Who would have thought a grown man would be so happy catching a single pout this big? Talking of blanks, or close to blanks? No, talking of blanks. 
I went to Frencham Trout Fishery and I went there because it does catch and release fishing. Now there's not many places to do catch and release trout fishing. I wish they did more of it because I don't really want a load of dead trout. Even if you have a nice big trout, what are you going to do with it? You can only eat so many trout. Not you trout anglers know what I'm talking about. You've got to gut them, clean them, head them, fillet them, whatever. And then freeze them and then what do they do? Yeah, they sit in the freezer for ages and then what do you do with them? I guess some people just go past the three month sell by date in the freezer and dump them. I don't dump them, I never dump trout. I mince them up and I use them for my sharking, like for my chum. But I, Frenchman is unique because it's got cold water going through it, constantly moving. And here's a few clips that might give some tips. If you want to go there, go there. It's just a regular day ticket. It's not, it's not a secret, it's just a day ticket water. But not a huge trout, but a nice trout, nice settings. You know, there's a few tips in here for you that might get you a bent fly rod. Anyway, so it was very, very cool here. And what the main thing I got here is water movement. You can hear it, it drains from here. It goes step back down there into this other lake. There's an inflow there. So you've got this water movement. And I think my belief is that's one of the reasons this is so successful as a catch and release fishery. Anyway, so it was very, very cool here. And what the main thing I got here is water movement. You can hear it, it drains from here. It goes step back down there into this other lake. There's an inflow there. So you've got this water movement. And I think my belief is that's one of the reasons this is so successful as a catch and release fishery. So I have to say here at Frencham, it's probably a year since I've been here. It's always was this lush undergrowth there and it was always very, very cool. As well, you can tell in the valley here and they built different stagings. They cleared a bit at the back. A lot of work's gone on here. And although there are only small pools, there are nearly always some trout to be caught in there. Now I'm looking and looking here, people. Ah, the mower has stopped. The air, the blower, the blower stopped. There's a fish moving away. I'm just going to see if I can reach this one. Now what I'm using is a four weight line here. That's all you really need. So there is no secret when you're going catch and release fishing. It's just fishing, except you don't have that strain and stress of having caught a couple of fish. I can see one moving there. Let's see if I can get a... You don't have the strain and stress of worrying that you say caught a limit of maybe three pound, four pound fish, two pound fish, whatever the size is. You actually can relax more fishing because it doesn't matter if you catch a fish, if you lose a fish, it really doesn't matter. I've got a weighted shrimp on there. Might be better with something a little lighter. As that fish is not looking at all. Now just behind this, this bush there is a fish. I'm actually using this plant in front of me just as a bit of a screen. No idea whether he's going to take. No, he's, he's looking at it but he's turned away. Well here we're moving up towards the uh, one of the top lakes. I always quite like fishing this one I think because it's at the top of the fishery and it's nice and open. Albeit raining. It is what it is. Let's see if we can creep out on this staging. Very often you can often see a fish just around the edge tucked in a corner somewhere. It's waiting to, presented, to be presented with a fly. I haven't changed the fly yet. I've got a shrimp and I'll show you what I've got. This one is called a pearly shrimp. There, I have caught on it before. I won't say it's a spectacular fly, but I have caught it before and I'm going to try this to start with. And try a few faster retrieves. Do about five, six fast retrieves here, I think. And then you can always change figure of eight, slow retrieve, little tweaky ones. But you can't write it off with just one speed of retrieve and say, oh, there's no fish here. The fish are definitely here. 
just get this out, guys. It's Jess, and you've got to you've got to find what speed they like. Very often here before, I have had fish take quite fast. Who, who knows why? It's just a response that it evokes in them, because there is no insect, no shrimp that's travelling at the speed of light like I'm doing here. So here, French, and they've done a huge amount of work. Now I've looked at it properly. Before, I don't think you used to be able to fish from there all the way up here. But this has all been cleared all the way up, right the way through. Lots of stagings put down here. Casting stations. Seats being made. So peaceful here. It's very, very quiet, obviously, other than the plains. And that is an amazing sort of, I'm going to say, expanse of water that they've opened up here. So extra facilities for the anglers. More water equals, hopefully, more fish. Well, there you go. It's a lovely place to fish at Frensham, especially in the spring and summer when you can get some good surface action up on the top on dry fly. And again, provided they're still running that sporting ticket, you can catch and release. Got to be the way forward, guys, have not it? Don't want to keep all those drought all the time. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Hit that subscribe button. Press that little notification bell. Otherwise, you won't know when one of our films go up. And I think I banged up about five films last week. Can they keep up with us? Got to be tough for them, but no, I'm doing it full time. And don't forget, Mike's Tia Outdoors is going mad. Did he tell me he's got 150 million views? I mean, I'm sure it was something crazy like that. Hit Mike's TA Outdoors. We'll see you guys in the next episode. And don't worry, they'll be fishing it hopefully. And I'm willing to struggle. I'm getting fed up and tired and sick and horrible. I don't like blanking. I don't like struggling. I'm with you guys. I want a bent rod and plenty of action. <laughs>